I'm Linda and this is No Frills ASMR. We're going to talk about the upcoming total eclipse. Guys, I'm real excited. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it. I'm real excited. So there is an eclipse coming up on April 8th, 2024. And it is called, they're calling it the Great American Eclipse. And the reason they're calling it that is because it is making a course that's sort of like a semicircle and it's kind of going like this across the United States. It's also going through Mexico and I think maybe parts of Canada up here. I'm not, I, I'm not sure exactly where, but I know it's kind of going like that. If you want to know where the path is, because they kind of give you like a, an outline of where you can go to be within the total eclipse. If you're curious where that is, there's a NASA website called Eclipse Explorer, and it shows you at what time it will be in totality, where, and you can look that up and get a good, you know, idea. Okay, I got to calm down because I'm so excited to talk about this. <laughs> I'm going to talk too quickly. This is the kind of stuff I get geeked about. <laughs> so I went and saw a total eclipse in Tennessee in 2017, and I kind of became obsessed. <laughs> um, I loved it so much. So if any of you saw that eclipse or any total eclipse, and I'm not talking about a partial, <laughs> it's got to be a total. <laughs> I'd love to hear about it. Um, let me move this gigantic book out of the way here. So by the end of this video, we should know what the eclipse is and how it works. And I'll be using the latest in CGI technology. I'm just kidding. But I have an orange, so you have that to look forward to. Okay, let's pull out this handy dandy book of cultural literacy and we'll just see if they um have anything to say about an eclipse just because that's always a fun thing to look up uh ec eclipse where is it i've got to be looking right at it there it is 468 oh <laughs> did i just do Look, I just opened a Jupiter, which I left off <laughs> on the, uh, what was the video? Oh, it was the um, Milky Way. <sighs> silly, silly, silly. All right. Einstein. 468 eclipse. In astronomy, the blocking out of light from the object, oh, sorry, from one object by the intervention of another object the most important eclipses visible from the Earth are eclipses of the sun when sunlight is blocked by the moon or eclipses of the moon when sunlight on its way to the moon is blocked by the Earth. We can talk about that real quick too. The term eclipse is also used to refer to a general decline or temporary obscurity. After taking the title last year, the team has gone into an eclipse this season. Okay, well thank you, Dictionary of Cultural Literature. All right, so I have my um, marbles here. And at first I thought that I might use a um, marble like this to signify the earth and one like this to be a moon, the moon and then the sun. But I realized that one of the things that's sort of awesome about an eclipse is that our small moon can block out the sun. So I decided to switch it up and use this to be the earth, even though it's orange. And maybe we'll grab a, a blue marble, actually, <laughs> Wait a minute. to be the moon. So earth and the moon. And then I went out looking in my house <laughs> for something that was kind of more close in size to, um... oh my gosh, it's casting a shadow. So I found this, this is a uh, space helmet, 
that my son had in his room. So this is our sun, and the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. Um, so that might be semi, <laughs> semi close. <laughs> All right. So we'll move that out of there. So we have our sun and this is earth and they're way far away from the sun. And then here's moon and the moon is going around our earth and stays with us and we go around the sun. Okay. So when you have a lunar eclipse, you have the moon on this side of the earth and the sun is shining on the moon. So on the earth, this side is daytime and this side is nighttime. So you're standing here in the nighttime side, side and it's dark out and you see the moon with the sun reflecting on it. So you see the moon and then the moon goes into the shadow of the earth and becomes dark. And that is a lunar eclipse because the earth is blocking the light from the sun. And that's kind of neat. I mean, if you ever hear of one and you can go out somewhere and just watch it for fun, it's, it's neat. It's okay. It's, you know, it's kind of fun to do. We did it when our kids were little, took them out in the middle of the night and got our sleeping bags and <laughs> watched it. Okay. So that's that. But what we're about to see is pretty exciting because excuse me, there are solar eclipses. And I heard on a podcast recently they were talking about like how there's so many solar eclipses and they just keep trying to make a big deal about this and it's no big deal. That's just not quite right. This is a total solar eclipse and this happens about once every 18 months, but oftentimes it will happen, you know, over the ocean or over like a very remote area where people can't really get to to see it to have it come over like the United States like this for us is pretty exciting. It did happen in 2017 and that's the one that I went to see and it was awesome. So if you can get to it, <laughs> I would go cause I don't know. I should have looked up. I don't know if it's going to happen again anytime soon, but what happens is the moon gets in a position from the earth and it actually blocks out the sun completely. And even though the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it's because of perspective, because it's so, the moon, or sorry, the sun is so far away that the moon can actually block the light. And all you see is the outside atmosphere or ring around the sun, the corona. That's all you are left seeing. So it's really cool. Um, I thought I might try this. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'll try to give you kind of a uh, example here. We'll move this out of here. So let's say that this orange is our sun. Actually, and this little tiny marble is our moon. So you, your perspective right now, you're on earth looking up <laughs> and the moon, because it's so close to us, comes like this and it blocks out the sun. And that's basically how it works. And then it keeps going. Um, it's really cool. So when you, if you can get yourself into the path of totality, is what it's called and find an area where you're kind of out in nature a little bit but not surrounded by trees you need sort of an open space to really see it but it's nice to have like kind of nature around because when this starts to happen and it starts covering the sun it starts to feel like twilight and it takes a little while so it feels kind of like twilight and the birds will start to chirp and the crickets will start making noise. All the animals will start making noise and they start flying towards their nests. So you'll see all the birds start to fly. And pre you know, they think it's nighttime and it's time to roost. So then as it goes across, it just gets more and more like that. And then all of a sudden when it's covered, it becomes
becomes dark as if it's nighttime, you can actually see some stars in the sky and it becomes silent. All the birds go quiet. I guess the crickets, I can't remember if they keep cricketing or not. I actually don't remember that, but it just becomes like nighttime out and you can just see the corona. So it would be like that much yellow, maybe kind of around the outside. If you're wearing, by the way, <laughs> this is important. You have to wear special eclipse glasses and those protect your eyes from the radiation of the sun. And that's no joke. It's very dangerous. If you've ever watched like any of those shows where the, <laughs> this has nothing to do with this, but where the men are on Mount Everest and women, sorry, people are on Mount Everest and they take their glasses off and they can go blind from the sun. That's, you can have that happen. Like it's very dangerous. So don't stare up at it. But, um, but with your glasses on, you can look at it and you can watch as the moon covers it. And then you see just like this little like swirly around the outside. It's very, very cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I was going to say. Oh, and when I saw it, I went to Tennessee. We drove down, um, <laughs> I think we left at like 2 a.m. to beat traffic. And we did beat the traffic and then watched it and then drove home the next day. But I will say, if you're driving to be, get in the path of totality, there's a good chance there will be a lot of traffic. And I had heard that later in the day, there were traffic jams all on the roads. We just left very, very early. Um, and probably all the hotels are going to already be booked by now because I think there are a lot of people who, like me, get pretty excited about this. <laughs> and I don't have a hotel room, <laughs> so I'm just going to try to leave in the middle of the night probably and drive in the dark. <laughs> to get to a spot where I can see it. I don't know where I'm going yet, but I'll go somewhere. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. Um, oh, and I, I was listening to um, a scientist talking about it, and they were saying that they, like, research the animals in the zoos to see how they react. And I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool. If you could find a zoo that is in the path of totality, I bet that'd be pretty neat. Like, I would want to be outside the lion's the lion's area and see if they make roar or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, but I was just near a lake and it was awesome. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say about that, I was with my uncle and I was like giddy. I mean, I was like, when is the next one I'm going? I will watch every solar eclipse I can because I had seen the not totality once before and was like eh. but this being in totality <laughs> it's a different story but anyway I was with my uncle and he was like eh, whatever it was fine <laughs> so I will warn you you might not have the same reaction I do <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that I get like even just doing this marble thing it sort of fascinated me <laughs> anyway um Oh, I know I was going to say, my sons on the last one in 2017, I went with one of my sons and we loved it. But my other two sons were in probably about 98% totality. And they were like, what well, was a big deal? It was so no big deal. And I think it's because when you're like that, it goes kind of like this and it never totally goes dark. So it just kind of becomes like you know, like twilight, but not dark. I think you have to, if you're going to see it, <laughs> get yourself to totality because it's, it's, then it's really cool. And then the animals do stuff and I don't know. I thought it was cool. Um, oh, I know. I heard one scientist too talking about how it, this, to see this, it's pretty awesome because if you are in the distant past or the distant future, and I'm not sure why this would be, is it the moon would be in a different space? I don't know, but it wouldn't, you wouldn't see it so perfectly. 
Like it just happens that we are in the right time, you know, in history. And this is probably by a few thousand years, I don't know, but that you can see this thing. And I've heard that like, if you look at ancient cultures, they've drawn on caves, things that look like eclipses and stuff. So it's all pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of anything else. The only thing else I can think was this one scientist I was listening to was talking about how they have the things that they can learn and they were talking about animals, but they were also talking about the sun and how they don't know. I don't want to say they don't know a lot about sun, but there's still a lot to be learned about the sun. And one of the things she said is that, um, as far as the thorough dynamics of it goes, they know for some reason, like the core of the sun isn't as hot as the outer part. I think that's what she said. And so this gives them kind of an opportunity to study that. I don't really know how that works, but I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else 